and bring me the two fishes and five loaves. And it is there, beloved, that Jesus, as uh, he was standing there, as he took uh, the, 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 the two fishes and the five loaves of bread, he walked off and he blessed it. He broke it, gave it to the disciples, they distributed, and at the end of the at the end of this particular passage and this storyline, there were 12 baskets full left over. And as a result of this, Jesus then tells his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. He had to force them into the boat because I can imagine the disciples now looking around and saying, man, look at what he did with the two fishes and five loaves. We can make a mint out here in the midst of the desert. If these people keep coming out here, we can make tons of money. How is it that he made a whole a feast for or possibly between 15 to 20,000 people? How is it that Jesus was able to take two fishes and five loaves and keep multiplying it as we gave it? We never ran out. I stopped by to tell somebody on today, beloved, if you trust God, if you give him your little, he'll make the best out of it. And you will never see the end of what you give him. And as they uh, were, were, were forced to get into a boat because Jesus wanted them to know that this is not our starting point. This is not our stopping point. This is only a rest stop because the crowd is following us. There's bigger ministry ahead of us. And so Jesus forces his disciples into the boat. And when they get into the boat, the Bible says that they were totally in the middle of the sea, in the middle of the night. Then in the midst of the sea, in the midst of the night, there was a storm that arose. And this was storm that rose had them worry not because of the storm they were used to the storms because they were fishermen they knew how to navigate through the storms they were worried because in the midst of the storm in the middle of the sea they looked out in a distance and saw a figure and claimed it to be a ghost and in response the ghost said fear not for it is I Peter then responds and says to the uh, figure that is walking on the water, watch this towards them, walking in the direction in which they were sent. Peter then responds, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus says, come. Peter steps out of the ship. When he steps out of the ship, he begins to walk on water. The Bible says that as he was walking on water, he began to see that the winds were boisterous and he began to sink. And Jesus reached out his hand to him. Only after Peter said, Lord, save me, Jesus then reaches out his hand to him, pulls him up and says, oh, ye of little faith. And the Bible says the two of them walked back back to the ship together and then and only then uh, did the wind cease that when they got into the boat and this brings us right to the crust of our text as they got into the boat in the boat beloved it was there that those who witnessed Peter sinking and Jesus stretching that they begin to worship Jesus making the declaration that thou art the son of God. Beloved, it is in our lives that we must understand that in those sinking moments is where we really find out how good the Savior really is. And I want to applaud Peter because Peter could have called on James and John. Peter could have called on Matthew and Judas. Peter could have called on Thomas, but he was too far away from Thomas and close enough to Jesus that he made the right selection. I want to encourage somebody on today. I know you got a best friend. I know you got your mama. I know you got your daddy. I know you got the auntie in which you can call on. I know you got that uncle that you're cool with. But can I suggest to you when you are in sinking waters, when you are in the midst of a storm, when you are out of your element and you are doing things that you've never done before, I want to suggest to you that when you begin to sink, you have to know how to call on Jesus. 
when he called on Jesus, they, Jesus stretched his hand out and together they walked back to the boat. And it wasn't until the two of them were fully in the boat that the storm began to cease. In the boat, the disciples who refused to get out of the ship when Jesus gave them an open invitation, when he said, come, it wasn't just to Peter, it was to all of them, but Peter was the only one who had the gall to get out of the boat to follow up on what he was saying. I want to suggest to somebody in here on today and somebody at home that you have to have the call to follow through after Jesus tells you to come. Some of us are asking God to open up a door. God says, I'm opening the door, and you still refuse to walk through it, the door simply because the winds are raging around you. But it was the same winds that were raging when you were in the boat before you saw Jesus. Beloved, it is here that in this text that they worship Jesus not because he walked on water but they worship Jesus I want to submit to you simply because they saw how Jesus saved Peter that we cannot dismiss or discredit some of our downfalls because some of our downfalls and shortcomings are simply an opportunity for Jesus to display his willingness to save us in the midst of our own indiscretions. Jesus did not badger Peter. He just said, O oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Because oftentimes the challenge for us is not what we necessarily hear, but often what we see. It is what we see that often causes us to lack the faith that is necessary to cross the finish line of what we've been walking by called faith. You started school. And because you see how you are not able to, at this time, to cover the expense that you become fearful and you begin to sink. But by faith, if you hold on to your faith in Jesus because you started by faith. See, this is the thing that we have to understand. That if we start by faith, we are now challenged to finish by faith. But even when we fall short in our faith, we have to know who to call on when we fall short. Peter, he... He causes a situation that turned from embarrassment to adoration because those disciples who were in the boat and afraid to get out of the ship, they saw how Jesus saved Peter. And when they got back in the boat, they had to confess, this is truth. You're really the son of God. We thought you did something when you turned, when you took the two fishes and the five loaves. We thought you did something when you were ministering. We thought you did something when you healed the people. But we know for ourselves, because you not only blessed Peter, but you blessed us to let us know that any time that we begin to sink, if we learn to call upon you, you will save us too. And I, I want to stretch that thought and that idea just a little bit further because they would worship Jesus simply because once he got in the boat, the storm subsided. Which is to indicate to us that even in our failure, if we walk back with Jesus, knowing that he is Lord acknowledging that he is Lord that once we get back in the ship that the storms around us will begin to subside and worship will break out they went from worrying to worship 
And it is here, beloved, that three points I want to make observation of. The first thing is the connections. The connections is they were following Jesus simply because he was connected to John the Baptist. They knew they were related. They knew the message that John the Baptist was preaching about the Messiah coming. And Jesus made personal connections by going to each of them and personally inviting them to become disciples of him. And while they were following him, they could not make the connection of who he really was until until he began to walk in the power and the authority of who he really was. The second point is that there were contrasts between John the Baptist and Jesus. Because in the beginning of chapter 14, Herod, who ordered John the Baptist's execution, he was scared when he heard Jesus was now on the scene because he thought Jesus was the resurrected John the Baptist or reincarnation of John the Baptist. So it scared him. But there were some contrasts between John the Baptist and Jesus and they were simply not in the matter of what they were preaching but it was simply in the matter of how they dealt with the people. John the Baptist ministered to the people telling them that Jesus was coming. When Jesus came he not only ministered to them intellectually he spoke to their spirit but he also ministered to them physically which John the Baptist could not do. There were some contra there were some contra there were some contradictions or there were some contrasts rather between John the Baptist and Jesus and lastly there is no comparison between Jesus and John the Baptist while John the Baptist spoke truth to power Jesus had the power to speak truth not only did he have power to speak truth but Jesus had the ability because he was truth And it is here in these verses, verses 33 through 36, that we discover that there is no comparison between who John the Baptist was and now who Jesus is. And they make that declaration very clear right here in verse 33. Truth, thou art the son of God. And Jesus pushes it a little further because he could have stopped in the middle of the sea. He could have stopped the mission right in the middle sea. He could have stopped ministering right there in the middle of the sea. But he continued on. He needed his disciples to make that declaration to let him know that it's all right for me to expose you to the next level. Because when the next level comes, they were in the middle of a sea in the midst of a storm where they encountered the Savior. And the Savior not only saved Peter, but he saved them in the midst of the storm while they were on the ship and when they got to the shoreline word began to grow word was passing around people became knowledgeable of who Jesus was they heard what he did on in the desert they heard how he healed the sick and they heard how he was feeding the people with just two fishes and five loaves I don't know how word got to where they were going before they got there however word got there and when word got there they were waiting and they brought all their sick to Jesus from all around the country of that particular land and when they brought all their sick to Jesus, Jesus healed them all. When he began to heal them, he did not heal them temporarily. He did not help hazardly heal them. The Bible says that as they touched his garment, watch this, Jesus didn't even have to lay hands on them. He had so much potent power that was perusing from him that all they had to do was touch his garment. Can you imagine the power that the church would have that if we came to worship, that if we came to to worship, to acknowledge him that even in our fault, how we were wrong and how right he was, how much power there would be in the sanctuary, how much power there would be in our worship, how much power there would be in our praise, that when people just touch him, 
without him touching them uh, they would be perfectly made whole I stop by on today to tell somebody he's real we have to understand uh, the mission of ministry is never personal even though it's personal issues uh, that we have to work through we have to understand uh, that the mission of ministry is always to tell somebody else about his goodness it's here beloved that the Bible says that they brought those who were diseased. They sought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touch were made perfectly whole. I'm so glad on today that all I have to do is I can just reach out to him. Even in the midst of my trials, if I just reach out to him. Even if he doesn't put his hand on me, if I can just reach out to him. If I can just touch the hem of his garment. If I can just get to where Jesus is. If I can just get to a place where his presence dwells. If I can just get to a sanctuary. This is why the Bible says he inhabit the praises of his people. If you're wondering how to get to the hem of Jesus. I stop by to tell you all you got to do is just start praising him. And lifting his name up. And when you lift his name up, his presence will adorn you, and you'll be able to touch the hem of his garment. Now, you might say, but they say Jesus is dead and gone back to heaven. I stop by to tell you, no matter where he is, you can touch the hem of his garment. Now, you can be in the courtroom and touch. The hem of his garment. You can be right, your pillow can be wrapped with tears and touch the hem of his garment. Your body can be wrapped with sickness and you can still touch the hem of his garment. Your mind can be all over the place, but you can bring your mind in subjection and call on the name of Jesus and touch. The hem of his garment because his word says uh, that he will give you peace that surpasses all uh, understanding. Uh, I wish I had a witness uh, who don't mind testifying. Uh, I was on a ship one day uh, sinking down in my sin. Uh, the songwriter said it best. Uh, I was sinking uh, deep in sin, uh, far from the peaceful shores, uh, very deeply stained within, uh, sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea he heard my despairing cry from the waters he lifted me now safe am I do I have a witness you don't mind testifying that I touch him and I know him he's real he's real to me do I have anybody at home who don't mind testifying that Jesus is real the devil tried to stop me the devil tried to break me but I stopped by to tell you because I called on him he has made me whole Jesus is real he's real to me he gives me victory so many people doubt him but I can't live without him that is why I love him so because Jesus is real to me I woke up early one morning and my pillow was wrapped with tears I called him the Savior just because I know he was here. He is every one of my burdens and he dried every one of my tears. That's why I can say Jesus is real. This is why I love him because Jesus is real. He gave me victory because Jesus is real. He healed people because he's real. He broke me. He gave me breakthrough because he's real gave me anointing because he's real. He gave me healing because he's real. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. He's real in my storm. He's real in my sickness.
sickness. He's real in my hurt. He's real in my pain. He's real in my joy. He's real in my wholeness. He's real in his love. He's real in my mind regulation. I stop by to tell somebody that he's real. Jesus is real. No matter how people feel about it, Jesus is real. He's real in my life. Time and time again, when I couldn't figure it out, it's because Jesus was making a way. When I didn't understand it, Jesus was making a way. When I could not get it together, Jesus was making a way. And if all I can do is touch the hem of his garment. In other words, if I can't get to the church house, I still can touch the hem of his garment. If I can't get in the sanctuary, I'll make my own sanctuary where I can touch the hem of his garment. For he's a way maker. He will transform our lives from what we were to what he desires us to be. Beloved, I am honored on today to make the declaration that Jesus is real because he's real to me.
Father, we thank you for this worship experience. We thank you for how you've allowed us to operate on today. We pray, God, that this message might be a blessing unto someone at the time that it is produced and ready to go. Lord, we pray, God, that someone might declare you a Savior and Lord. We pray right now, Lord, that you will pour out unto us everything that we poured back. That you will pour back into us everything that we poured out some two and threefold. We pray that you would keep us until we come back together again. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. gift is Jesus Christ. For if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Not in a moment, not in a twinkling of an eye, but right now. We offer Christ Jesus unto you. Come just as you are. There is no condemnation. For he hears the famous cry, he answers by and by. Uh, come to Jesus right now. Uh, we also ask that you you look us over here at Providence uh, Baptist Church on 87 East Haines Street in Philadelphia, PA. Come worship with us in the spirit of holiness. Come lift up the name of Jesus that your soul may be fed. On Wednesday, we offer an invitation unto you to come on our prayer call. To, to have that talk with Jesus and tell him all about your troubles and, and, and he'll hear your famous cry and he'll answer by and by. We, we bid you to come. We bid you to call. We bid you to serve. In Jesus' name we do pray. We love you and we thank you. God bless you.